A Photographic Phantasm by Paul Crumpler, M.D. I have always believed that there is a simple and natural explanation for all seemingly supernatural happenings, but I recently had the occasion to question this belief. I cannot doubt my own personal knowledge, nor can I deny what my own eyes have seen. Therefore, I cannot dismiss it as a figment of my imagination. The facts are as follows. There is a rural section near me into which I frequently make visits in the practice of my profession as a physician. The people are quaint, simple, and kindly sort, honest, unsophisticated. I was called not long ago to see a little girl in the neighborhood and found her very ill and with a poor chance for recovery. She was the younger of two children of a very intelligent farmer and his wife, the latter, however, having a rather nervous temperament. I had treated the woman before the little girl was born, and although she too was above the average in intelligence in her neighborhood, she was a person who would be classified medically as neuroasthenic. Realizing the seriousness of her child's sickness, she was becoming very nervous, so much so that I found it necessary to leave her some sedatives. She was worrying a great deal because she did not have a picture of the little girl. It seemed that the family had planned on several occasions to have a group picture made in the village but each time something had prevented their doing so. This, she informed me, was preying on her mind and accentuating her grief. The child died and I heard nothing more from the family until about two months later. This time, my call was to the mother. I found her in a state of hysteria, bordering almost on insanity. She was holding a number of photographs to her breast and alternately laughing and crying. It was impossible to get any coherency into her actions. Her husband, however, told me that just before he sent for me, the rural mail carrier had delivered the photographs which had been taken of himself, his wife, and the remaining little girl about six weeks after the death of their child. After much persuasion, we were able to get the photographs from her, and after glancing at them, we saw the cause of her hysteria. The dead child was photographed in the group almost as plainly as the others. She was sitting on her mother's lap, and on her feet were little white shoes which she had bought after her death to satisfy the mother who did not want to bury the child in the old and ragged pair, which were all she had. She was dressed exactly as when she was buried, wearing the dress that the mother had made for her to wear when the family group was to be photographed. Did the phenomenon happen by mental telepathy from the mother to the camera? The mother had grieved unusually and her mind was entirely filled with thoughts of her child. If the explanation is not to be had from this line of reasoning, I am unable to solve it. The picture is there, and also the photographer to verify the truth of this. The picture shows the two children and their mother and father. The photographer is ready to swear that only one child was visible to his eyes when he made the negative. Thank you for listening to Weird and Curious Tales, Strange Stories for a Midnight Listen. More information about tonight's story can be found in the show notes. If you have any questions or would like to know more about this or other stories, you can reach out to us via email at weirdcuriousTales at gmail.com or find us on Twitter at weirdcurious underscore. Also be sure to check out our super short form stories on TikTok at Weird Curious Tales. See you next time, and remember to stay weird. <laughs>